Hi there, welcome to part six of this tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at making our maps into 3D printable objects. Now to help um, streamline this process for you all, uh, I've put together a, an add-on for Blender <clears throat> that, that should make this really quite simple. Um, so the link will be in the description, uh, but I've uploaded it to GitHub. Um, you just need to right click on this file, Gaia2TileHelper.py, save that onto your computer. And then when we go to uh, Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, and in the Add ons tab, click this little down arrow and install from disk. That will make this appear. And then uh, I can't remember, you may need to check this box, but make sure this is uh, enabled. And then once you've installed that, uh, just hit N on the keyboard. And then this little tab here will uh, pop up. Um, this is, I put this together to help with tiled builds from Gaia. Um, but if you haven't got tiles, that's fine. You just need to set the rows and the columns to one. Um, so for the, there's two workflows. There's the kind of STL creation workflow, in which case all we need is the height map. Um, and we also have the, the rendering workflow. So this is kind of replicating what I spoke about in part three of this series. Um, so I'll just go to an example height map. This one. So if you are using tiles, um, you just need to select the first tile in the series and then it will work out the rest. We want to select an output directory. And because I'm just going to quickly test the, the render workflow, I'll load up some textures as well. Um, I don't actually have proper textures for this one. So just as an example, I'll load up the water mask as if it's a texture. And then we want to load up something for the roughness, which again, in this case, I'll just use the water mask again. Um, take a note of where the white areas and the black areas are on your mask. In this case, I've got the black areas on the land, and this is the opposite of what we want. So in this case, I'll have to select Invert Roughness Map. Now it's good to get an idea of how much displacement strength and how many subdivision levels you want for your 3D print. So I do recommend um, you can leave these blank um, if you're just going to be 3D printing. Uh, but I do re recommend generate tile renders. And here it's loaded it up. And this um, doesn't show you the thickness actually, but it does show you the, the height uh, that the displacement strength is is giving us. Um, so if you're happy with what you're seeing, um, the subdivision levels, I would say four is probably the absolute maximum you could have. At this point, you'll be creating a, um, an STL file that's about a half a gigabyte. So I think three gives good enough details, especially for 3D printing. Um, so when you're happy, you just need to click the generate STL tiles button, and then you will need to just navigate to your output directory and then open up the STL in your slicer program. Okay, and here we have the STL file in the slicer program. Um, because of the way this is generated, there will be no overhangs. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it is impossible for there to be any overhangs if this is placed flat on the build plate. The one downside of printing it flat on the build plate is if you're resin printing, um, you can get marks from the, the FEP film. Um, but uh, this is definitely going to be the fastest way to, to print this. I don't have an FDM printer, so um, I can't say what the best approach will be for that, but I imagine that will be flat as well. I think the examples I've seen of this printed with FDM filters, this is how people do this. Um, so yeah, a nice quick tutorial for today. 
Um, I just wanted to finish off by saying I am making this um, Blender add-on for free rather than trying to make it, uh, you know, for sale on Blender Mark Marketplace. If you do have the means to show support, um, I'm going to link uh, my coffee page and you can leave me a tip there. That, that helps me kind of make this available for everyone. And then if you do have the means to support, you can do so. That's it for today. Um, I'm going to be, I've got some really cool stuff coming up. Um, so while this is probably the end of this series in a way, um, I'm going to continue making videos um, just because they no longer kind of fit this sort of linear workflow anymore. So yeah, stay tuned and I will see you again soon.